Hello YouTubers. Trying to sneak a video in here. Look at that. The sun finally made it out. It's been rain, rain, rain. Real muddy. I'm going to try to get a video out. And so this is going to be the Jeep side of freaking Jeep. Um, going to be dealing with automatic worn lockout hubs or freewheeling hubs or whatever you want to call them. Um, on the Jeep, if you're looking at it. I'll show you in a minute another picture in the catalog. These are the hubs. They're the automatics. I don't know whether you can read that on there or not. Real easy to tell the difference because on the automatics that's smooth here. On the regular manual, these will have ribs in it. I'll show you that in the book in a minute. Uh, trying to go slow so you don't get too busy. What we're going to be dealing with is taking these hubs off. Because I'm selling this Jeep and I want to keep the hubs for another Jeep, uh, I want to take these off and what a lot of people do is they'll sell these hubs and they'll take them off You'll take your bolts from around here off which we'll show you in a minute um, I don't know if that snap rings on there We're not going to put that back on anyway And then from here on down everybody leaves on the axle So a lot of times you'll see on eBay they'll sell a set of automatic hubs And you're going to get from here down to here But if you don't have from here down to here they're never going to be automatic So that's that's one thing that I want to show you. Here's here's a list of part numbers if you're interested in that. Uh, also if you're into overdrives, here's a overdrive blowout which I imagine you can probably get that on on the internet. Here's some part numbers that go with it. Uh, nothing else. Now we're going to go back to um, I thought I had a picture of the Jeep. Here's the uh, what does it say? Breakdown assembly for the clutch assembly on externally mounted hubs, standard locking, and lockomatics. So this is this is how to do it. So I'm just gonna kind of go through there if I can get that thing out of the way, and you can stop it where you want when you're um, looking at this video. If you have a question on it, I don't know that I'm gonna be doing it exactly like this, but. I'm going to be doing it somewhere around here like this. I'm just trying to take these hubs off and get something on there. i got a gentleman coming tomorrow to look at it, and I told him the hubs weren't included. But when they see the hubs, they say, oh, I want those hubs, I want those hubs. The last Jeep I let go, I let go of the set of hubs, which I said I wasn't going to, but I did. I shouldn't have. But see how this is smooth right here? On the manual hubs, they're ribbed. So you can look at a set of hubs from a mile away and tell whether they're automatics or not. Oh, there's one on the back side of this. I wonder if I missed the one on the back side of there. This is the cage for the clutch assembly right there. This is just how to take it apart. I hope I didn't screw that page up some. Now we'll go over to this. Uh, man, we're already up to three minutes. Uh, I think I'm not sure if this is the same hub or not. I'm just going to zoom through it quick. Like I said, you can stop it where you um, need to if you're into this. There's the instructions on that. There's anything down on that on that picture. This is a catalog from back in 1973. I'm guessing that's what it is because that's the date. Here it goes through the overdrive unit too. If you guys need the overdrive unit, um, we can get it to you if you can't find it online. All right, I'm going to set you on here. I'm going to try to take that hub off. I think I got all the tools. Um, I hope the wind's not too bad. And then as soon as the wind isn't bad, then what comes up? A jet. So bear with the jet and the wind. I'm going to try to take that off and see how long, see what it takes to get those off. I'm not going to put uh, mittens on because if I put mittens on, I can't work the camera, can't wipe my hands, and I'll throw a couple rags down there. Let's see what we uh, got in there first. I'm hoping this will take it off. I don't, I don't remember whether I put that, put that, uh, uh, oh, everything's going to roll. Oh, it's such a mess out here. Uh, there's a snap ring sometimes that goes in between here and there, or some kind of C-clip or horseshoe clip or I don't know. You can call it whatever you want, but it, it's important to learn, learn how to take these off. Okay, I didn't have the 
I didn't have that clip on there so this should just come off here's where the important part is I'm gonna have to take this camera off that if you don't know what you're doing see that in there somebody's butchered these up a little bit because these were used two of these have Allen sets in them two of those have Allen sets in them and two of them are, are drive out ones it looks like that's got an Allen set so there's probably an Allen set. So this one and this one here, um, they're probably a special spanner wrench to get those off. I'm not sure. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, put this back up there and hope i got to get an Allen wrench. Uh, I think you're there. And uh, usually it works best to have a uh, needle nose pliers. So needle nose pliers. Kind of hard working here. Ah, oh, there's my Allen wrenches. Hope I got the right size. I'm trying to think a screwdriver or a pry a pry thing of some sort. Make sure you're still on the screen. Yep, you're still on the screen. Generally, these don't have to go in particularly tight, but you got to take those Allen wrenches out first. And I might not have an Allen wrench here small enough to do that. And you don't need to take them out all the way. There it is. That one, and don't lose them because you're not going to get another set. This one's the one that set the set it from backing off. This is your inside clutch of that. Now see, this one here shouldn't have one in it. Nope, and this one shouldn't have one in it. There's one down here that might have one in it. Yep. Some of them had three. Some of them had two. You can hear it click on undone. But it goes into a funny little plate. Now hopefully that will unscrew. Uh, there it goes you might have to tap it I used to have a pair of angled screw uh, needle nose pliers that work good but uh, I was working one time and somebody else liked them more than they like to stay in their box I guess things walk I should have replaced them that's the only time I used it was for this so when you get a set of those automatic hubs you need this piece and see these little Allen sets? Now, now let me get the next piece off. That'll help explain if I can get that little piece off. Here it comes. That's what locks those uh, hubs from coming out. Or wheel from coming out. Uh, wipe it off a little bit so you can see what it is. Alright, this goes on, there's a keyway here on the spindle. This goes in and catches on that, so now this can't turn. Then these will screw in, where'd that little Allen set go? These will screw in, if they're the right Allen wrenches, Allens. Yeah it is. You can just barely see that this will come through well that you'll find will come through and match up with this so they don't have to be real tight because if you go too tight it'll hit that nut it's all they got to do is go in there and hit it so then they lock into there and sometimes you can get two of them to lock sometimes you can only get one to lock it's uh, kind of like the luck of the draw so to speak so now that I got two of them two of them will lock see so that's but when you get automatic hubs now in here there's a set of clutches. See the clutches around here? They're a fiber clutch. And this goes in there to make that automatic hub work. And this goes in there like opposite of where I took it out. So the, the spindle nut won't back off. Now to put this back so it's safe, I have to put a spindle nut on there. Or a spindle washer on there, which I got one up here. My pants are ripping every time I go up and down get too fat and sitting in a sitting in the TV watching now here here on this you have this part here that goes in there and goes on that and that locks that in then you have to take uh, the spindle nut now there's a usually a cut side and a smooth side I like the smooth side out I always kind of like the cut side 
you might like a might do it a different way it doesn't matter this is not this is not a perfect how-to and it might be a how to do later and yeah, I'll flip it around I don't that don't matter this this Jeep is going out to somebody that's gonna restore it there it goes all right got to get back up again then you get your old Jeep tool and you can spin that in and then you bend one of those a little bit of that over yeah, I know you're not gonna be able to see that but that'll keep that nut from then backing out now what I'm gonna do on this Jeep is just put a another set of hubs on there which is something um, just what I'm doing I, I don't know how to explain it ah here's the now normally you there's a there's a uh, clip that keeps that axle in the right spot I didn't have it on there so this one didn't get one on there and as all I'm doing is putting this on there so this guy can pick this Jeep up if he gets it, he's just coming to look at it. And it's got the bend over tabs. I'm not going to bend them over because he's going to work on it as soon as he gets it, if he gets it. And if not, I'll probably put uh, non-locking hubs on it. I'll put just straight, straight hubs on it. So that's basically it. Now I gotta go do the other side, but what I'm trying to get through is don't sit there and hammer on these. Two of them are for unscrewing. Two of them are for for a maybe a spanner wrench of some sort that was made by Warren. I never saw one, never seen one in the catalog. Like I said, I used to have a a um, set of needle nose that had 90 degree nose on them, would take this off good, but they they grew le grew legs. This one's got three Allen sets in it, and like I said. If you don't get this when you get your automatic hubs, you're not getting automatic hubs, you're just getting regular old hubs. So be careful what you get yourself into when you're doing this. What a mess. All right, that's it. Maybe I'll see what kind of time we got and go do the other side. I gotta move everything over there. Uh, we're at 13. I'll make a part one and part two and go do the other side because then I gotta move all this stuff over and clean this up and get it to the other side. So I'll make a a part two and see if I can find anything else in the book so over and out I'm moving to the other side plus this might have been windy I, I, I don't know that'll give me a backup over and out